we're in. It's a good place to be. <laughs> Not too bad. <laughs> Beats the closet in a heavy duvet. Yeah. Man, I had a good time this weekend. I bet. It's <laughs> never a bad time, time over there. It's never a bad time. And for those who are listening, I'm talking about Holy Smokes Fest. Year three, it was absolutely amazing. Um, I've been honored to be a part of it since year one, and every year it grows. Every year the amazing talent pool grows, and every year we feed and do even more and more good. So really happy about it, and uh, we're going to share. Like Y'all are going to get sick of us uh, on the feed with all the stuff we're sharing because so much stuff happened, and there, there are so many people there. You know, the the roster was the – Staple set from year one and year two, but then you had new additions like um, Tuffy Stone, uh, Amy Mills. You had, uh, and I'm so happy I got to meet these guys because we've we've reported on them before. But we got to meet uh, Don of Corey Barbecue, nice. um, Hector of Palmera, and uh, uh, Ruben of Bark. And it was it was cool getting to chop it up with all of them, especially having this great conversation with Ruben. Because he was just uh, so gracious and grateful for the love we were showing him because he was like, he was getting tagged and hit up when we, you know, <laughs> talked about the episode. Because yeah, we first yeah. featured when he got his read, then we featured again yeah. when um, <laughs> when I was like, man, he, dude's just too good at his job that he's got his neighbors are haters. I said, I know it's one of those people up there that, that are hating, that are trying to get you shut down because it makes no sense to me that you're selling too much food. You're selling so much <laughs> food that you have to get shut down. Yeah. I was like, that's a that's a neighbor. That's somebody over there that's like, man, their line's blocking my non-existent line. <laughs> you know, but we ended up cracking up about it, and um, I'm, I'm looking forward to having them on. But it was just so dope, just sharing, like, sharing experiences, stories, you know, cultural differences, cultural similarities, like, Called ourselves the my, my, the minority team out there because <laughs> you got Don, you know that Vietnamese influence, and you yeah, got yeah. you got uh, Hector over there, you know, Puerto Rican and, and Cuban, and you've got uh, Ruben uh, Dominican, and just this odd looking Jamaican oak tree in the back, just lifting hogs. So <laughs> it was a it was a good time, and they made I'm I'm I'll I'll go ahead and put it out there. Everyone's used to the hogs that we make. Every year. And I think part of it, too, is experiential. And how often are you going to get, you know, a hog fired, you know, by Rodney Scott? How often are you actually going to get birds dipped by Chris Lilly? You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Like, mm-hmm. there's just certain things that are just, the food's great, but then also the experience. But then having these guys out here, uh, they were firing two hogs, and they just brought up just a different flavor profile completely. That's not typical in that region. Uh, mind you, um, Hector is in that space, but at that event, we haven't had that type of flavor profile since. And I can speak on that without anyone going like, Oh, how do you know? Cause I've, I've been there <laughs> since first one. I fired them, cooked them all. I'm always doing hogs. Always lived. I'm, I've been there. Tried them fully, all. Yep. Fully cooked them all. Yep. <laughs> fully were fully, fully were done the overnights. Um, but uh, it was just such a, uh, I don't even want to just call it a frito that they put on there, but it was something just so very, it had a lot of flavor. Mm-hmm. It's like how we cook, you know. And uh, I like we. I, like I, I do a lot of the cooking. Yeah, you do a lot. I mean, I just, <laughs> honestly, I just sort of hit, sit back and relax and, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Th- thankfully, you're there just busting your home doing it all. What would you do? I don't know. <laughs> honestly, you wouldn't know what I would do with, without your <laughs> all of these cooks. Gosh, where would it all go? Like, what do I do? <laughs> um, but uh, we were calling it the Sazon era. <laughs> you know, it's a new size on our barbecue and it's true we we all have that same belief and have experienced it that there is in fact a renaissance happening in barbecue i've been saying it for over a year and change now it is happening and every time i go to an event every time i get to meet these cats in person and we all get together and break bread and talk yeah just confirms it well and i would say like um <laughs> And now that we've put on one as well, 
Yeah. <laughs> it, it is, no matter what you do, it seems like it's growing. As long as you mm-hmm. promote it well and let people know about it, it is one of those things like, have we been to a barbecue event where it's been multiple years or multiple times the event and it hasn't grown every single time? No. I mean, and I will say like, uh, like have a, a short history of those events, I feel like, because I didn't really start going to um, like those types of barbecue events and stuff like that. Unlike, like outside the last like three years ish. Mm-hmm. But every time I go to one, I'm like, this feels bigger than the last one. Definitely. You know, Definitely. and all we ever hear about is VIP selling out. Oh man. And immediately, you, ooh, immediately expeditiously. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, uh, when I, t- when I drop, when, when we, when we drop what's coming for 2024 grill and chill, if you don't get those VIPs, man, it's, it's going, you're going, you're going to be swinging that air. <laughs> you're going to be so <laughs> mad. That's all I got to say. Um, but definitely the VIP for Holy Smokes, that's where you wanted to be. Yeah. Cause it was even better this year. Cause you were literally right on us mm. this year. They had a, uh, you had your own private bar and bartender, doing mixed drinks, straight pours, right? They oh, didn't nice. have to go out into the gen pop. All well, because last year, a lot of the food stuff, you 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 didn't really have to, like, wait in lines, but you still had to go out for everything, Exactly. Correct? Everything was all enclosed. That's awesome. Right beside us this year. I mean, that's the experience that you pay for. It is. It is. And it was it was, it was really, really great. Everyone coming in through the VIP, coming and taking pictures, talking, seeing the hogs getting pulled. Mm-hmm. Um, some guys are, are just trying to get better technique. So. Sure. To have, and that's why I say you have to understand the level of access that a VIP at that level gets you, right? You're not only getting the food, you're not only getting your photos, you're not only getting your book copy signed, but you're getting to ask those poignant questions that, yeah, you can shoot a DM, you can shoot an email, but it's probably going to be in there for a long while if it ever does get answered. So you're getting yourself a couple of minutes with these guys, and it is very costly to have all these guys together and yeah. they do it for just a great cause and i will say too like i mean not all of them but some of them not all those guys run their social media yeah no. so e- even if it is like red and somebody's like i don't know let me see if i can get an answer for you it's yeah. like mm-hmm. you might not be getting an answer well, have you tried googling it yeah <laughs> <laughs> mm, no man but it was it was great and here's the wild part so this year at night it was hot yeah and during the actual day of the event, it was cold, windy, rainy, <laughs> and people were still out there in droves. Oh, yeah. It was packed. You could not tell. And they weren't letting that weather stop them. They were like, hey, we're going to eat. Yeah. We're going to eat. And they ate every, <laughs> everything. So that's that just goes to show, like, next year. And the official date hasn't been released, but Anthony said it's cool to say the second week and in November, whatever that is, that's when it's going to be. So the second weekend in November is is, is when it's going down. And um, I can't wait to go back, man. I'm excited. And they do such good things. And this fell on Veterans Day weekend. And they honored uh, the veterans uh, they made a donation to uh, different uh, various veteran focus groups. Mm-hmm. Uh, we had some of our own veterans out there. Patrick's out there. Anthony is a veteran. We even had everyone's favorite blue. Yeah, Chewy. I was say, Chewy no was way he's there. getting left out no, here. <laughs> never, never. Chewy came out, and, and it's wild, man. So Chewy had bought a, v- a set of VIP tickets because he, he didn't even know. He was just like, I just want to go because we talk about it on the pod. Yeah. And you got VIP VIP because he just had, <laughs> probably put out. him to work. Yeah, he yeah. hung out with us. He yeah. hung out with us the whole weekend. He was up at nights nice chatting with Ronnie. Got to introduce him to Chris and Anthony and you know everybody else. And okay. he had a he had a ball. And you know, um, I've never seen it, but he received a gallon of Ronnie's uh, mop sauce. Oh, nice. <laughs> and, a, and a quart of the same rub we just tossed on the hog because Chewy's doing a whole hog this weekend. Oh, hell yeah. So, Rodden was like, here, here you go. And when I tell you, you know that scene <laughs> in uh, Despicable Me, the first yeah, one, where yeah. he hands her, the, where, where she sees the unicorn? That's what Chewy's face was like. He was I love like, it. For me? <laughs> <laughs> it's so fluffy. So, but wait, he's so doing excited. it over this weekend? 
Yeah, he's doing it over this weekend at, in his backyard. He does so once a year. maybe we should talk to Chewy next week. We should see how it went. Yeah, I definitely want to. I okay, want, live. I told because uh, so I, I asked Rodney. I was like, "Hey, bro, is it good if uh, if it's all good? Like, I won't pull this one. Can can Chewy glove up and yeah, and jump on and pull this one and, and, and get hands on there? Yeah, because uh, Chewy's helped me cook a couple of lambs this year, a couple of many things, but we haven't done a. He has a hog with I'll throw me. in a slow mo shot right here. Yeah. Chewy flipping, flipping. That, that'd be great. <laughs> um, so uh, Ryan was like, "Yeah," and, he, and I've got a couple shots now. Send him to you. You see him breaking up. He's understanding, trying to show him how we do it by touch and feel and mm-hmm. the gauges because those will throw you. And I was like, "Brother, if this isn't the best hog you make this weekend, I don't know what to tell you." <laughs> I, I said, "All you have to do is go find the mop now. You literally yeah. have everything yeah, yeah. else. So That's this awesome. one's on you." Uh, but it was great honoring the vets, doing a great call, seeing familiar faces. Uh, Jackson of Swing and, uh, Swig and Swine, uh, you miss him this year. He's got a whole little beard thing going. Uh-oh. I saw that. I was like, oh, this is new. <laughs> this came in nice. <laughs> uh, but he's still over there, 20-year-old young man now, killing it. Nice. Killing it, killing it. Still still in high demand. Um, I introduced him to the amazing folks over at the uh, Windy City uh, event. There were so many other great people i feel like this was just one of the best ones yet yeah weather aside it was just we had um i mean that's what you want though within it is. if it all if it can outdo its previous iteration of itself yeah i mean that that in itself is a win true true um we had lerma our jail came in came out there and was snapping amazing photos of everybody nice uh b even came out. Oh, no know? way? Yeah, V came out, and that was great. Nice. You know, it was like Prince entered the building or something <laughs> like that, you know? Uh, of course, Tank and Bear, always great seeing them. Uh, it was just a fun time, man. Nice. It legitimately was a fun time, and I'm always honored and humbled when people ask why, and I said, it's it's long days, you know, get in, a, get in Thursday, load in Friday, fire Friday, service Saturday, Wrap Sunday. But you, the gems and little nuggets that you pick up along the way, worth it. Mm-hmm. Because, yeah, you might be there this whole weekend, but you could get like one or two lines from Rodney that you're just like, yeah. Like, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, that, that's the that, one. That's, that's, that's what I was looking for. Uh, that was what I was looking for. And it hit. Mm. It just It just worked out. Um, like one of those, one of them, and one of them, I'm definitely putting, I'm going to design something to put on a t-shirt for it. So I'm not going to say it on here yet, but, uh, the second one, he was just like, um, you know, he has this saying, you know, uh, every day is a good day, Yeah. but there was another where, he, and I literally sent myself cause I started a folder called, uh, Rodneyisms <laughs> 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 and, uh, and, um, every year I ask him the same question. Do you ever get tired of being the Rodney Scott? He's like, nope. Nope. He's like, yeah, I ask this every year. I was like, I'm going to keep asking every year. Yeah. Is he? Because you give, it's always a no, but with a different reason behind it. Mm-hmm. And he says, no, because life is about circumstances and situations. And being me, I'm able to control my circumstances by putting myself in the situations I want to be in. Mm-hmm. And I was like, hmm. That's a Rodneyism. Put that right there in my little note. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it, it's just those little gems and being able to introduce Chewy to everyone that he, you know, allies in this world and watching them, like, you know, take him on his wing and teach him some stuff and let him, him get hands on mm-hmm. and then jumping on and still being of use and helpful in different regions. It's Those are the things that this is about. You know, it's a heck of a community, and I don't know another culinary community like it. Uh, I really don't. No one's no. no one's leaving barbecue to go would be a chef. <laughs> <laughs> so there's no mad dash out of it. I will say chefs are leaving uh, restaurants to become barbecuers. This is this is very true. Barbecuers, pit masters, because I feel like you don't immediately jump in and get be able to be called a pit master. I don't think any of us who do call us ourselves one. We're just I don't think. Uh, just, well, the that's the other thing. I don't think. Yeah, know? I don't think a lot of pit masters would even call themselves a pit master like I don't, that's what people say about me i'm not yeah. that's not me yeah i just i just i just play with fire for a living i'm a traveling pyro so i mean is there a uh, correct term for pre-pit master barbecue barbecuer barbecue. feels weird yeah like i'm i'm you know i, I barbecue okay <laughs> i barbecue i cook 
you know, I'm, I'm, I'm get most will tell you like, I'm just getting into it. I'm, you know, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm a rookie at this. I'm trying to learn An amateur barbecuer. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that's what I tell people. Uh, 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 uh amateur butt rubber, semi pro fire starter. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, also before I forget, November 9th is the second Saturday of November. Next there year. it is. November 9th. There it is. Ladies and gentlemen, November 9th. Holy smokes. Don't yeah. hold it to us, but seems about right. That's what Anthony said. And it's about we'll, what we were told. Yeah, and I've got the video where he says it, so we'll put that up too. <laughs> CYA, still. <laughs> this means cover your ass, ladies and gentlemen. Yep. It really does. Um, but it, it's, it was an overall great time for a good cause. And for those of you who don't know, the funds of this are donated to various uh, – our foundations like the Ronald McDonald's house where we're just supporting pediatric uh, cancer within mm-hmm. children. And Anthony was sharing a story with us and I'll put that video up on the page of, I think he said he was in the, he was either in the airport or he was out. No, he was out and about and ran into one of the families from the year before. And he's like, Hey, you know, we're getting ready to do the event. Are you guys going to be able to come out? And the child wasn't doing so well off mm-hmm. and the dad sort of said something that hinted at Anthony. So he sort of knew like, I don't think we'll be here for it. Mm-hmm. And you're just like, yeah, we got work to do. We got work to do because these kids are going through something. No child should ever have to face it and choose it. Yeah. Just the luck of the drawer, if you would. And uh, stuff like this helps and they're making impactful changes and you actually genuinely get to see yeah. where the the funds and money goes like that was i told uh told you when we were doing grill and chill like i've never realized how hard it is to do good like give money to do good oh yeah it's like so many loopholes like not loopholes so many um barricades so many yeah. walls so much red tape i'm like i don't need this i'm just trying to give you this to do this thing yeah oh yeah well that's not how it works why yeah <laughs> and no one can tell me that part no. i mean i would assume it's because unfortunately people inside of those organizations have probably screwed it up at some point where there have to be rules like that true but true. you you would you would think and hope that it would yeah. be easy enough to say you're an organization that is providing a service and a space towards this yep i would like to fund it here's yep. some money Yep. Not that easy. We we figured that out. We've trust me, we figured that out. Um, and you know me, uh, if I can't find it, build it. So I ordered some books, literally the um, 501c3 for dummies books. And I've been reading through those because part of, I know we have a few major hit points next year, but part of it next year is doing a foundation yeah. doing my own. Yeah. Then it's like, okay, cool. We can do this ourselves. Yeah. You know? Um, and with that being said, welcome to This Week in Barbecue, the barbecue focus show that brings you both the good, the bad, and everything in between in the world of barbecue. I am your host, Rashid Phillips, and joining me is my, I don't know what you are. You're just... I'm here. You're here. I'm filling a seat <laughs> until other warm. people want to come here. <laughs> <laughs> Keeping it warm, because Brian's out there doing absolutely amazing things. Make sure you go check him out at Owens and Hall, but uh, across from me is Mr. Lee Garman. Now you guys know his face and see it, which was also a high a high rated question at uh, Holy Smoke. This no, week. I'm dead no. serious. I'm dead serious. Where's Lee? Where's Lee? And where's Brian? Are they here? Are they here? <laughs> Just listen to the pod. It's like I don't see him. I'm I'm dead serious. Ask Corey. Ask Corey. So yeah, it's happening. People listen. Uh, still shocks me. Yeah, <laughs> still yeah. shocks me. Uh, to the end of it, where we so as always. As you know, tradition goes, we finish up Saturday. Yeah. We have drinks over at, uh, at Billy's, which, yep. was, which we did. It was great. Had some great sticks. Next morning, brunch at Rodney's. Yep. We're having brunch. We're eating, we're eating our grub. I'm sitting with Tay. Guy comes up, um, and he's like, hey, are you Rashid? I was like, yeah. He's like, man, huge fan. I listen to the, sh- I listen to the show. Uh, gave me a sticker. His name uh, goes by The Bearded Stone. And I, I'm still amazed. <laughs> Still amazed that people listen. Really am. And he's not even from that. He's He was on his way down to Florida uh, oh, to dang. celebrate a, uh, his birthday, his 50th birthday, I think is what it was. So he wasn't told. even there for Holy Smoke. He no, just happened to be passing through. He just through. happened to be passing through at the right time. I was like, man, I'm a huge fan. I didn't even, 
my wife was telling me not to bother you. I was like, no, man, I'm, I'm yeah, fine. Yeah. He gifted me with a sticker. I went and got him a hat, wished him a happy early birthday, and just, just chopped it up. And it was just great. So I appreciate any and all of you who listen. You see me, flag me down. Just not at the John, because that happened once, and that was really weird. <laughs> um, I was there for that one. I remember being <laughs> like, are you serious? Yeah, like that's, that was just... Like just, you, you, you know my physical location. You could just wait outside yeah, the bathroom. Like there's no <laughs> other exit. I'm not. Go, I'm not. I can't get away anywhere else. Um, <laughs> and I promise you, you'll get a, a warmer reception from me if you wait until I'm done taking yeah. care of business. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the middle of it's pretty weird. Just a little odd. Definitely not shaking you. No, 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 no. Hard. We're not shaking hands. <laughs> not shaking, no. <laughs> like that old Family Guy skit where they're both going and make a business. They're like they shake on it. It's like, great. <laughs> You got to see it to know what I'm talking about. But if you did, you, it's funny. Um, but no, you guys who listen, thank you. Yeah. Um, I'll always take a moment to just take a photo and uh, share some words or whatever I can I can impart. So it means the world, guys. It means the world. Yeah. Uh, let's start uh, getting a, a, a little bit of uh, news, shall we? Let's do it. So from our good buddies over at How Low Can You Slow?, they're back again with another barbecue class. This one is a holiday barbecue 101 course that nice. is being held at Modern Barbecue Supply, just as a previous. It is occurring on December 1st, so it gives you enough time to practice it a few times before the big day. And it's only 65 bucks a person. It's a two-hour class, six to eight. I mean, I feel like that's a pretty good price. It's a dang good deal. At 65 bucks, that's less than what the bird would cost <laughs> at this rate, the way these prices are. Mm-hmm. Uh, so... Jump on that. We'll tag that and link that in the show notes. But if you're trying to give someone something that's an early gift or if you're just, you know, if you got voted, I know some families rotate who makes the dinner. This could be your year to shine. Just saying. Mm-hmm. Uh, on that tip, we have some news. Victorian's Barbecue, they're doing um, Tri-Tip Saturdays. So that's going to be a special on Saturdays that he's throwing out there, and they are open. If you've never had it, it's it's a pretty good tri-tip. As tri-tip. someone who's had it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so Victorian's Barbecue doing tri-tip Saturdays. Nice. Uh, they're open um, in Mart, Texas, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, 11.30 a.m. until sold out. So mm-hmm. uh, I'm sure they're probably doing some stuff for holiday orders as well. So get those in. Let's see. Well, oh, this one I'm I'm looking forward to. Did you ever see High on the Hog? High on the Hog? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. Yes, yeah, season two yeah, trailer yeah, yeah, just yeah, dropped, yeah. and it's coming soon this December. I feel like it, what do I feel like it took like two years or so, if not longer, oh, for, the, for, for, for it to release. But uh, the season two trailer uh, release, and I really am looking forward, because that, that show. Yeah, will, 2021. Yeah. Yeah, right on. Well, it got deep into a <laughs> lot of things. Yeah. I th- I think it was a a cultural shift in culinary and the history and what we're told about where food comes from versus what actually happened. Mm-hmm. So I don't get a lot of time to watch stuff, but I'm a binge that. I'm a binge yeah. that. You know, network included. Aside, <laughs> I'm not petty. <laughs> No, but I'm really looking forward to that. No, it's just it's just great work and it's inspiring work. And I think we're always different when we look at stuff like this because yeah, I think most people uh, from the outside looking in, they're like, "Oh, you like it because of the food?" I'm like, yeah, that's cool, but we're creatives first. Yeah. So we're always going back and forth on how stuff is shot, and yeah. it's like, man, that was a good, that was a good cut. That was a good, that was a good movement right there. That was a great capture. That was a great storyline and and. and so I just love the visual uh, in, in interpretation, how they the storytelling that goes with it. Yeah. Culinary stuff is nice too, but I love the flow of it. It's very inspiring. So yeah, I mean, I will say I don't think you can deny that uh, Netflix, since the first season of Chef's Table, yeah. has changed the way uh, just anything culinary or the food space is like shot. Like it is, I I would say even down to like 
Food Network, and that's not even the same type of show. Their production value has elevated since. Yeah, yeah. It's like, like Netflix put that out, and everyone else was like, ooh, mm, I Netflix. guess we could do a little bit better. So, yep, this isn't gonna <laughs> the, 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 we don't have to shoot everything in an F-11. <laughs> the the orange skin and the blown out highlights <laughs> thing isn't, uh, isn't really working out for us anymore. <laughs> Those rocky camera shakes, but stuff like that. There were, uh, I was talking about this with Corey, there were a couple pioneers that I don't think got their due. Um, and like that, just the storytelling format, just mm-hmm. getting nitty gritty to go into somewhere and tell the story. And a part of that team would be, uh, Les Stroud, Survivor Man. Mm-hmm. He changed the entire game of single camera, follow long docu style work. Survivor Man was shot by him and edited by him and like one other guy. Oh yeah. I mean, my buddies who are big time reality producers that changed what was expected yeah. of them. Yeah. They were like, I mean, if this guy can do it, he's not even a pro. He's not, quote he's unquote. not a, a pro. Quote. And, and he's, he's changed. And then you've got guys uh, in that same vein, that same era. Um, you're Mike Rowe. Oh, gosh, which is yeah. story telling. I've, I wrote my college thesis on Mike Rowe. And one of my highlight points was when Buddy Rutt uh, called me with him on the line. And I was like, man, like, I just love your creativity. Mm-hmm. Like, you listen my just that part of my my life and career a huge amount so yeah how the hog stuff like that to recaps even yeah wild wild tangent but check it out yeah. it'll inspire you and it, and in a and in a creator economy right now that's an example you want to emulate yeah. right like if you are trying to do that thing like people are like oh i want to be on good morning in america or today show i want to host this i want to host that it's like cool you have to be doing the thing you want to get paid to do. So you need to start crafting that stuff for yourself so you can do your research on these type of shows and pull from them and get those type of examples. Yeah. And that's going to work for you. And that, well, and I will say that's also the difference. It's not, we're not saying that you should always work for free, but you at least have to prove that you can do it before you can have the expectation that people are just going to come to you and, uh, I don't know, just start paying you freely. Yeah. It's like, if I don't know you can do it, why would I start giving you money? Yeah. It's like, I'm not going to pay you to paint my car when you have nothing to show. Yeah. You, what, what? I need to know you can do it. <laughs> just, and sometimes just that's just doing it on your own for a little while. It is. And jumping back to talking to the cats at Holy Smoke, it's, like I said, you've got Dominican, Puerto Rican and Cuban, Vietnamese influence. Jamaican and legitimately, like I said, the minority team. And there were, there were so many more similarities than there were differences. Sure. Oh yeah. Dra- the similarities drastically outweighed. Like we're talking about, uh, Platanos and Mofongo and sweet plantains and all them like same thing. Yeah. Just going about it in different ways. And sometimes we all do it the same way. We just serve it in a different way. Um, Don and I were talking, and I'll let you guys decide if you want this to happen because they just did one over at um, uh, the Texas Monthly Fest last week. So they did that, <laughs> came over, did another <laughs> one. They're just on a roll. And I was talking to Don. I was like, you, we need to get two, like, 150s or two 175 hogs. Don and I on one, Ruben and, and, and Hector on one, and we do a 50-50 on each. Like, I do a half on a jerk. He does, uh, Don does his Vietnamese, then um, oh, nice. Hector does his style, and then Ruben does his style, and we do our own festival because we don't have to wait for these invites anymore, you know? We don't have to wait to be say, a part. We can just start and be a part. We can just do it ourselves. One big thing that we have learned from this year. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, it's a lot of work. Let, let's lot let's of work. not say yeah. that it's not an undertaking. Yeah. But you don't have to wait. That is that is that is the message of twenty twenty three. You don't have to wait. Yeah. You don't have to wait for someone to give you the green light to validate you. Mm-hmm. If you know if you're doing the work and you know you can uh, uh, you, you can bust it out, showcase it. Yeah. Do it. Do it. <laughs> Literally. Uh, what else do we have? Some 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 housekeeping tidbits here. It was always great seeing Andrew and Michelle over there at Moose, crushing it. Um, Bobby's. Eat Bobby's Barbecue mm-hmm. is hiring. They're, they're hiring. And he is currently, I don't know if it's sold yet, but he's also 
last I heard, selling his uh, thousand gallon smoker. Ooh, that's a big so one. That's a big one. I think he's asking for fifteen thousand. So if you're in the market for a rig, I believe it's a primitive. Go, you can reach out to uh, to Tay at uh, Eat Bob Eat Bobby's Barbecue online. And speaking of thousand gallons, wasn't uh Matt saying he's got a he find, found a a few more thousand gallons? Yeah, Mike Mike said he came across them. Mike and Matt came across a couple uh, a, a good amount of thousand and five hundreds. Uh, Which is, I would assume, I'm, I'm not in the market as a fabricator to do those types yeah. of things, but that seems like those probably aren't just lying around <laughs> everywhere. <laughs> he's, he's, he, this one, he told me he's been trying to get this connect for months and months, and yeah. it finally came through, and he's got some good stuff coming. So I'm, nice. I'm happy for him. Um, I mean, I always love seeing what they crank out. It's the, just, it's the, cool stuff. It is. The shop is just a dope shop. There's stuff everywhere being built in progress. You can see the various stages. There's levels and right angles everywhere because everything's just, it, it, it means the most. Now, how do I say this without saying it? Sound like a dick because I'm not trying to sound like a dick. This is probably where it's still going to end up sounding like a dick. All right, anyway. Um, <laughs> so I've got a review video of the of Eminem's thousand gallon mm -hmm. not paid not sponsored they haven't seen it they don't know what's in it yeah but one of the things I spoke of in there to me that was a value because I'm st I'm I'm bringing on a bringing a lot of uh back experience from when I first started my my first pit that I had built I'll never forget Richard of Keebler's uh, Kajim called me and he was like, hey, I'm going to go get a pit from this person. What do you think? And I said, no. I said, that is who I got mine from, and I promise you, you will be extremely unsatisfied because that thing was basically a radiating bomb. It, it held no heat. It was your standard diamond-plated black metal. It's not insulated, sharp corners, I would stay away from those rigs at every, every cost, not, not touching them. But well, and those are the types of rigs. things that while you're living with it, yeah, like looking at it from afar, it's like, oh yeah, that looks cool. It looks like fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But there have been plenty of rigs that have been sent to you. And like, we look at them and we're like, like I legitimately might just start cutting myself up by like brushing against this. Yeah. Cause like you would think it would be so simple and like working with metal, you like finish it mm -hmm. or not finish it. But I mean like, take a little bit of an angle grinder, like mm -hmm. sand it down just so that there aren't sharp edges where pieces of cut steel meet. Yeah. And last, that's not always, it blows not, my mind. You see, and I'm glad you said, cause yeah, we do get sent rigs and from some of your guys' favorite <laughs> builders and I, I don't put them out there, but you know, I have some that I don't even, I haven't even touched that. All they do is literally hold my cast iron. Cause I'm like, I'm, I can't fire this. I'll die. <laughs> like this, this cold hurts. This hot is slicing through something dangerous, you mm -hmm. know? Um, but the review's coming, and, and I say this because we're at the event, and one of the points I point out in the, one of the um, highlights I mark in the review, which is, it should be out by the time you guys hear this, is mm -hmm. the fact that the seals are extremely tight, right? Um, that once you latch everything down, it's extremely tight and nothing's coming out, and that's really important because for me, I, I run this, I'll never forget, years ago, I got an opportunity to consult with Chick-fil-A, and I was talking with their head chef, and the level of detail Chick-fil-A goes into for their margins and everything. Oh, gosh, yeah. Oh, I, I still have the notepad from the meetings and everything, and that's when I came in, I was like, all right, that's how I've got to do it. Your, your bottom line is made in those decimal points. Oh, absolutely. So if I have a unit that I can save, maybe I'm just saving loading 10 extra splits per cook. And if I'm cooking every day and we got a restaurant, that's a lot of wood. That adds up. And and that's how detailed it was. And that's why I got into the review. And all this to say, I promise you, I'm landing the plane now. <laughs> we were out there. Something happened. And there was a grease fire, and a rig really took off with that fire. I mean, turned into a fire-breathing dragon. Oof. And the whole area filled with that 
dark white smoke. Yep. And they shut it down, locked everything off. But the gaps on the seals and the doors were still wide still enough. And, out. And, on the, and it was wind, so all those gaps, that one is just shooting in there. It's just feeding that fire and that smoke. And what should have taken a few minutes took close to an hour Damn. to extinguish. Damn. So that's where I say that attention to detail, right? When you have something that's tightly sealed, yep. you're not letting heat out. Yep. You, you get it insulated, everything's staying nice and protected. You're re- repurposing that heat. I was just watching that, and I said, "This, this is this is why those little things matter." Yep. Because if you get a grease fire, you're loading everything off. You're trying to shut it down. It took an hour. Yeah. It took an hour. If this was a restaurant, you could have lost your restaurant. Oh, oh my gosh, yeah. <laughs> you know, because well, yeah. How far can a fire spread in an hour versus five minutes? Yeah. <laughs> you know what, what are you gonna do? But not knocking anyone of uh, 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 that was part of it that was there or, or heard of it or may recall or not. I'm just saying, hey. This is where those tight joints matter, having that heel sealing. Heat seals work and really make a difference because you don't want a lot of air coming out. You don't want a lot of heat coming out because that's just money being wasted. Well, yeah, I mean, that's the stuff that's like the attention to detail that you kind of hope never becomes a thing. Yeah. But when it becomes a thing, you're very grateful that things are tightened up, you know. (laughs) Because even the one that, you know, the the one I have in the, one of the ones I have in the yard that just holds a cast iron, it doesn't latch. Like, it came built, like, it doesn't latch, it doesn't close, there's gaps all over the place. So I said, this... No, it just has a door that closes. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, there's not not even just a little... No, I said, this is a backdraft waiting to happen if I ever put a fire in this thing. Yeah. So, for right now, you're just really good at holding cast iron. Yep. What are you going to do? Uh, oh, and this rolls right into the next topic. Um, the high cost of barbecue, right? So... I'm on the old Instagrammies. There's this great place that I follow. Uh, if you haven't, check them out. They're called B4 Barbecue. That's their social handle. And they're in Mabank, Texas. Probably saying that wrong. Pops will let me know. And the owner shared their food cost um, order that, that just came in for just this week. And it was just one little snippet of the food cost order. $7,600. For the week. For the week. They're only open three days. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> they're in, like I said, they're in my bank. Te- my, 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 my bank. I don't know. They're in something. They're in Wells Fargo, Texas. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> it's my bank, Texas. Um, seven, bank. M- my, my bank. <laughs> it's not a mukbang. I'm kidding. <laughs> it's not. <laughs> it's Who knows? completely different. Oh, yeah, maybe. Seven, yeah. Seven, six in food. Only open three days. And that's... This does include overhead. It's not labor. It was not just wood. Food. It was just raw. It was just raw meat. Not even all the food. That Damn. was just meat. And uh, I'll, I'll have to pull up the post because he he puts it out there. So he's just like all brisket and tomahawks. <laughs> what are they doing? <laughs> it's 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 costly, man. It's it's is. Gosh, if people knew, if people knew, it is it is quite um, an undertaking, and you have to get that type of stuff and. In a heavy bulk amount and a, and, a, and a good allotment, but he goes, reality check, for those that like to complain about the price of barbecue in today's world, here's a snapshot of our food delivery for this morning. This is only one week's worth of forecasted food. This is strictly meat. Um, not labor, overhead, or wood cost. And keep in mind, we're only open for three to four hours, three days a week, and haven't even started full dinner service yet. Oof. Customers aren't the only ones who pay high for barbecue. Just food for thought. Hope everyone has a blessed day. And remember to support your local pit master this week. Now, you got two sides of the fence. Oh, well, if you're... Where are they located again? Mobem- oh, Texas. <laughs> Texas. Texas. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bank, state. Texas. I should have just said state, yeah. They're, they're out there. They're yeah. out there. Yeah, man, that's... So, we, I mean, here's a question. Do you think that... Uh, I mean, like, how regional do you think that those prices are? Because, I mean, we've kind of bounced around and done stuff, like, had to source meat in different places. I think everyone's hurting. I was talking yeah. to, shout out, shout out to Smoke Queen Winnie. I was talking to Winnie when, when I was in San Diego, and she's getting hit yeah. with, with prices. Logan's telling me they're getting hit with oh, prices. Yeah, they're Cali. both on Cali mm-hmm. side of it. And then, you know, we're down in Texas talking to Kaylin and Pops, and those prices are crazy. Like, you know, people were wanting us to do, um, you know, oxtail was the number one voted dish for the Grill and Chill private 
uh, VIP dinner. Mm-hmm. It was going to run me twenty four hundred dollars to cook oxtail. Yeah. For that amount of people, I was like that. I said there's there's no way. There, there was no way. I I was able to get uh, both whole lambs for a tenth of that. Yeah. Like, what am I supposed to do? Yeah. You know so. And even up in um, New New York up north, uh, everything there is costing. When 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 Corey and I were in Connecticut, oh mm-hmm. my gosh! And oh, that I was when you had the crazy there. ribeye price, right? Yeah, I was like, "There's," I said, "There's no way this is forty dollars." <laughs> <laughs> I said, "There's no way you got me." You're trying to you're trying to explain to me that this one bone in under a pound is forty is a light slice of a pound is forty dollars. There's there's no way you can't tell me that's normal pricing. Yeah, it's everywhere. It is everywhere. This is why you can't be wasteful. Uh, yeah. You know, I'm in, I'm, I'm in the group chat with the Blues every day. We share meals that we make, and I, I shared one with them. And uh, I, I just had a little breakfast for dinner thing. I did some uh, golden potato hash uh, with uh, pastrami onions and uh, an, an egg. And he was like, oh, what, what's that thing over there? Because I, I, and for those of you guys who don't know, and it will be in my book. When I do pastrami, it was some tallow, but it was a special tallow. When I do my pastrami's, I don't trim anything. I leave it whole, and when it's done, I just desalinate it. Then I smoke it, and after it's done, smoke and chill it, and that's when I trim the fat off. Mm -hmm. And I store the fat like it's butter. And I, whenever I need a butter and oil, I just slice a little of it off and toss that in a pan and break it up because now. It's got that smoke flavor. It's got that pastrami brine and flavor in there, all the herbs in there. Extra delicious. And he's like, I never thought of that. I said, well, I'm not going to throw it away. It's edible. It's delicious. And it brings so much more flavor to my dish. Like I said, it's too meat, meat and things like this are way too expensive right now to even throw off the, the trimmings. Like, mm-hmm. you got to repurpose them. And, um, yeah, I, 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 I feel for the guys over at B4. I can only imagine how creative they've gotten had to get. And also, what they've had to pull off the menu sure. as things have gone up. Plenty of people have had to do it. Or, you know, uh, I remember Brian and I used to talk about how can't offer ribs all the time. Yeah. Because ribs are too <laughs> expensive. <laughs> Rib prices are just way too high. And ribs in the pork world are the worst buy. Yeah. The absolute worst buy because all you're paying for is bone. Yeah. At least in a beef rib, there's a heftier amount of meat. Yeah, yeah, more to, more ounces of yeah, more edible, ounces of meat, more ounces of, <laughs> of edible meat to bone ratio yeah. versus what ends up happening on a pork rib. Yeah, it's bad. Like yeah. I, I still say in my head, the the best, the best high yield um, protein will always be a pork butt. Oh, it has to be. There's there's yeah. no way. There's no you try 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 to convince me different. Try to convince me different. The high seal, it, it just works. Yeah. We you saw how many briskets <laughs> we went through. The meme, the meme with the guy at the college uh, campus. <laughs> <laughs> like prove me wrong. Yeah. <laughs> prove me wrong. Change my mind. Like it's, it, you just can't change my mind. Like the pork butt will always be superior. And I mean, I can't even think of anything that like it's close. Second would be chuck, but it's the big whole chuck. Yeah. Um, because like a butt, once you just get that, you pull it apart, you serve it. Because I mean, here's even the other thing too. That's like a, a pound of butt. Yeah, on a plate in front, of you, you're like, oh my gosh, like that is a that's Ooh. a lot of butt. Versus like a pound of brisket on a plate, you're like, could so where's, can you, I get some more? Can, is there, there's more coming, right? Yeah. It's like mm, no, there's not. Yeah, it's very it's it's trippy. It's really trippy. And there's also that less fat, too. And maybe it's just happening because we, we've we had to cook drastic weight amounts for both in a seven-day period. Mm-hmm. We had a couple hundred pounds flying up to White Plains, and we had a couple <laughs> hundred pounds going up to the Carolinas. So mm-hmm. got to see both ends of the spectrum for feeding all that we fed. And the butts always yield more, man. Yeah. They always oh, gosh, do. Yeah. It's, it's, it's the best way to go. So if you're starting out, if you got a big family – Whatever you're trying to don't don't do the turkey. The turkey, I mean, you can, but like it's just going to be different. Yeah, it's going to be different. There's a lot of bone weight there, and if you are going to smoke a bird, save the bones, make a stock, make a stock, man, make a stock. That's 
got you got get the get the best bang out of whatever you can. Yeah. Um random side note, but uh Oh. Yeah. Oh, these guys. These guys. Cook and Go dropped some new knives. Insert B roll here. Uh, But they've got a new series out uh, called uh, The Grizzly Embrace the Wilderness. I kind of did this, man. It's kind of nice. You know, I never saw the boxes. Oh, really? (laughs) It's a cool (laughs) box. It is a cool box. It is a cool box. Uh, So you guys should should have seen that, but that's that's always nice. I mentioned that because holidays are coming up. And by the time you're hearing this, I should have already released our holiday gift buying guide, which is 100% non-sponsored. It's just stuff that I've used throughout the year, stuff that I've come across or while I'm out on tour. I'm like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. And I've added it to like my arsenal because it swaps out. You know, I don't bring the same role for every event because every event requires something different. So when you're doing that, I come across different things. I'm like, yeah, this is this is pretty cool. This is pretty nifty. That's a good knife. This, this oh, this would be a great gift for somebody. So most people find it really difficult to get gifts for someone in culinary, aside from like a basic cookbook or something. Sure. So I try to put this together to help people. I don't have any codes. I'll ask. I'll knock on doors to see if there are or if there are any links. So I'll do the guide and then I'll have one on the site if I can find any discount codes. But yeah, you should. Definitely, definitely keep an you eye on that You want to pull that knife out of the box? I would if it was in the box. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> it's in my knife roll. <laughs> it's being used. It's in okay, my so knife the, roll. Okay, so that says the, something, people. Hence, hence the, hence, hence, hence the uh, beautiful bean footage we're going to... Then we will for sure put on, on B-roll. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, that that is... Uh, <laughs> Trust me, if it was... I definitely would. I, I would would have snagged that one out there, man. I really yeah, we'll we'll just put in uh, Kevin's promo. Yeah, we'll drop we'll drop Pops' scope promo on that one. Yeah. Why cook such a good piece of meat and use a rinky dink knife on it when you've got supermarket knives or or regular whatever? Then you get like the pinnacle of what a knife is supposed to be. What happens? You get spoiled. Why not have an incredible tool to cut that meat with? And also, hats. Everyone loves a good hat. Everyone loves good hats, man. I, at least I do. Um, we might end up giving away a lot of these. These are the uh, certified Angus Beef brand, uh, an amazing sponsor for um, Holy Smoke. So shout out to them for being there, donating, and uh, helping helping the cause. Nice. Uh, some of our favorite guys here. I got that white on white. Call it that. That true Ooh. Rick Ross. That if we're giving white. that one away, that one might just go home with me. No, this one's mine. Oh, okay. Mine. okay. I I was was I, they're going to send us one uh, to give away this one. I've, well, I've then it might be the third one. The third that we one give away. We'll give away. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> it might make it. We don't know. I can't make any promises, but they got these amazing white on whites, and everyone in the Q world loves a good, good hat. So check that out. Yep. Uh, the amazingly talented Bettina was kind enough to sign and gift me this beautiful Babes of Q, oh, which nice. I think there's like less than a handful of males who actually have this hat. Nice. Who, who she's uh, who she's given it to. So I'm Bettina's honestly looking at that hat. I'm not sure it's going to fit on your head, it's, buddy. It might. Not. It's a little snug. I have to re- I have to redo my locks <laughs> in a certain way to get you can't it on clip there. Clip it on the back. I'm I'm gonna make it work. Don't you worry. I'm gonna make it work. But uh, thank you so much, Bettina. She was out there with us. Uh, just a, gr- a great time. Um, then I met a great guy, uh, Taryn from um, uh, Slow Fire Barbecue. They're in Savannah, so they're trying to fill the gap that B left. Do you know, closer to this side of your microphone if you want to see it. See no, it. there we yeah, go. Yeah, yeah. yeah, and we run them all back. But it was great chopping it up. He was out there with us all weekend. He was a volunteer supporting. Yeah, uh, rolling smokes, firing all. It, it, it was a good time. But I love a good hat. I love a good hat. Put this one back up there so everyone can see it. Yeah. Bettina's Babes of Q. And if you haven't, tune into the pod. She's got some amazing uh, guests and some really cool stuff coming up that I can't yet talk about for, but I'm really excited. Can, yeah. can you just hold those two next to each other just, <laughs> just because of what it represents for them? This is true. So <laughs> <laughs> this is it's, it's a family business. It is. Oh, it still smells like barbecue. It really does. <laughs> it smells like, <laughs> can't you some of that? It literally smells like it. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. It smells like the smells like the hog. Smells oh. like we were firing up. Yeah. No, but uh, that it was a great time. It was a great weekend. 
I'm looking forward to doing it again. It's winding down in the year, but we're going to kick it off again. Uh, next year, so many new things. We're going to be announcing stuff for Grill and Chill coming really, really, really soon. Oh, I'm so excited about it. <laughs> I'm really excited about it. Just off the top, certain things, Grill and Chill next year. Um, I'm looking forward to that again. one. I'm definitely looking forward to Grill yeah. and Chill, man. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Going chill next year. Memphis and May next year. LNA Barbecue Fest next year. Mohegan Sun Fest next year. A lot of fun. Good smoke rolling will be commencing. And uh, we got, what, six weeks left in the year? Just about? Yeah, sounds about right. Can finish strong. Can finish what, what strong. What else do we have? I don't know. Is there any big... I think this was this sort of bookend. It's kind of like the last the, of the festival. Yeah, yeah, this is the end of festival season yeah. right now. But there's still stuff to do, still work to be done. Always. Always. But um, with that being said, that's the end of the pod. And this has been This Week in Barbecue, the barbecue-focused podcast that brings you both the good, the bad, and everything in between in the world of barbecue. I've been your host, Rashid Phillips, and joining me is my co-host, Mr. Lee Garman. There we are, ladies and gentlemen. Tell a friend to tell two friends, like, subscribe, and as always, be good to one another. Mm, coffee. Yeah, it's a little early. Eh, it's not that early. Early enough. Coffee's, Early enough. coffee's still needed. It's coffee time. Yeah. Coffee time.